watch him playing guitar, writing songs, and... This show is produced for local cable access and media stations by e-awakening.com. I'm Dan Brillman, and I'm going to teach you how to play the song that we use in this show. It's a show about Rocky Morrison and the Clean River Project and how they've been cleaning the river for the last 14 years. This song is really simple. It just uses three chords. The A minor chord, the G chord, and the E chord. I'll teach you the song right after this show. They call you the Mary Mac. You're dirty and wide, polluted by humans. Did anyone cry? Did anyone stop to think that their children would drink these carcinogens? The Clean River Project. That's what our show is about today. My name's Dan Broman, and this is playing guitar, writing songs, and what's that story about? What's that song about? Playing guitar, writing songs, and. Today's show is about the Merrimack River and what water means to all of us. Let me show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. Our rivers are the lifeblood of every living thing, a common necessity in every community, a system of arteries reaching out into veins and capillaries. Water becomes the dominant element coursing through all of our bodies. The water of life becomes us. Water disperses and intermingles. This is a story about a river in Massachusetts called the Merrimack, about an epic struggle, a battle against indifference and ignorance. The cure is obvious like antibodies in an immune system attacking the disease, some people choose to fight. On this show, we have someone who's been and continues to be devoted to cleaning up the Merrimack River. In this short video, we introduce you to our guest. All right, patrol. Eyes wide open, scanning the shoreline. Rocky Morrison is on an expedition. He's fishing. No, not for the fin variety of aquatic life that struggles to live in these polluted waters. No, he's fishing for what now thrives in the Merrimack River on the north shore of Massachusetts. When we first started this, every 15 feet, you would see a bright object, whether it was a kid's toy, a piece of furniture. Sean has been volunteering for the Clean River Project since he was eight years old. He's now 15. We started nine years ago. It was like every 15 to 20 feet there was something stuck in the bushes and it was all bright colors so you couldn't, you couldn't miss it. So it took us four years to do from the Lawrence, Lawrence Dam to the Lowell Dam. Rocky Morrison, it's so great to have you on this show. I'm glad to be here. You know, we, I've known you for a number of years and your work just continue, continues to amaze me. Now we have a short video that shows some of the things that you're doing over on the Merrimack. If you were to go back in time nine years ago and you looked across this river, you would see bright colors, you would see orange, you would see blue, and uh, going down the river, you would see all these kids' toys, the furniture, the trash, I mean, just floating along the edges of the river. That's how bad it was. You can see that the Merrimack has its enemies those who choose to discard trash and toxic waste into the waters that we all share. Leading the charge to clean this up is the Clean River Project, a nonprofit organization that recruits the troops, supplies the boats, gas, tools, and supplies needed 
and a way to get rid of all the tons of waste. No, oh, that's really amazing, Rocky. And how did you start up the Clean River Project? Well, the river was so polluted, it needed some help. I mean, myself, I took the initiative with my friends and so forth to start cleaning that Merrimack River. It was so polluted, and you just couldn't, you couldn't ignore, I couldn't ignore it no more. So, you know, I got my friends, got the boats, and we started cleaning the river up, and here we are. Well, that's a huge project. <laughs> so what is the Clean River Project? The Clean River Project is a non nonprofit actually cleaning up the Merrimack River since 2005. I mean, we pulled out cars, we pulled out everything. Um, you know, it, in, in the beginning, we used to use our friends' boats and stuff, but they were getting wrecked, so we, I had to go and build boats. After, after a while, I got bitten by the bug, and I couldn't stop. So I built my own boats. I, I turned this, uh, this, this friendship into a, a, a nonprofit, and here we are today uh, pulling uh, tons and tons of debris out. <laughs> right now, we have a video on uh, showing some of the methods of collecting that trash. Booms are a very effective method helping to corral the floating debris. And certain sides of the river are like magnets. With the, the current, the wind, in the direction, it throws all the trash to one side. So that's where we, we drop our booms and we start collecting it. Because we'd rather trap it in one spot than go to every little bush all the way down trying to get the water bottles and all the small stuff out of them. So it's very important that we use the booms. So Rocky, how do the booms work? The booms go underneath the, the water about a, foot, uh, about a foot and a half. And basically the current draws uh, all that trash, which the river is a giant conveyor belt. It draws all that trash down to that one location where it bends. And we actually get to trap all that debris, whether it's floatable, you know, tires, car parts, uh, you know, bottles, all that stuff, that, that nasty stuff. We actually trap and we can pull it out. I know when I was hiking the Bay Circuit Trail and I saw your sign and I saw the booms in the water, I was wondering, Oh, you know, how long would it take to fill something like that? I'll tell you, it all depends on the, the speed of the water. Right now, the water's flying on the Merrimack River, so there's a lot of trash coming out. So we're trying to drop those booms in right now. So it'll probably take about 30 days for one of those 100-footers to fill up. And that's a lot of, lot of debris, a lot of trash. Yeah, and I understand that the booms is a real great technology for helping you with uh, cutting down on some of that labor of collecting that trash. You figure if we didn't have the booms, we'd have to go bush to bush to bush for miles, hand-picking these water bottles, uh, paper cups, foam cups, all that stuff, all the plurable stuff out of the bushes. It's, it's a big job. Well, Rocky, we have another video, and we're going to have the viewers look at the drinking water and how it's connected to the Merrimack River. Alarmingly, there is one fact to this story that you would think would bring out armies of volunteers. Over 300,000 people drink this water. And a lot of people don't even realize that this is their drinking water, their water supply from Athorn, Andover. You know, from, you've got to figure from Haverhill, North, every town on the river, this is their drinking water. We find a lot of baby turtles that nest in there. So when we empty them out, we've got to have just volunteers looking for the baby turtles. One extraordinary citizen tackling a monumental task, but one motivating factor keeps the Clean River Project afloat. I look at it, everything we stop here doesn't make it to Newburyport and Salisbury Beach where our kids play. And it's very important to stop it here. Well, Rocky, when I watch that, I, it brings back memories of how much work you were doing to, uh, on that day just to corral all that stuff from the boom. Now, are communities aware of the pollution that's in their river? The cities and towns are aware of it. The public are uh, not so much aware of it, and they, you know, when it comes to drinking water, they don't even realize they're drinking that water. So it's, you know, it is a concern. We actually educate the public about this, uh, about this problem that we got on the Merrimack River. But, but you're saying that the public isn't really aware of it. I yeah. Mean, there hasn't been a big push to let people know what's, what's in their river. Exactly, and a lot of them don't even realize they're drinking that water. And, uh, this, and it's, it's been upgraded to 600,000 since the last time we shot that video. So. 600,000 people? Drink that Merrimack River, yeah. Drink water from the Merrimack River. Yes, yes. Now that leads me to my next question about political leadership and um, are they, is the government uh, catching on to this wave that you're creating here? After 14 years we have uh, three cities that are contracted with us put these equipment, the booms and the waterways because I can see how, uh, how they work and how uh, you know, effective they are. We have Lawrence, we have Haverhill, we have uh, Chumsford uh, in the waterways, uh, in their waterways. But you know, uh, we're working towards the other, the other cities that are kicking the can down the road. Uh, eventually, they have to come on because their their shorelines are polluted. I know you're a real straight shooter, and I remember those 
we did those videos uh, several years ago, and you were kind of beating your head against the wall saying, I really want to get this out to the towns to start, you know, taking advantage of what I'm doing here. Yeah. It's been incredible. And I know that you depend on volunteers, and we have a video that's going to show how important volunteers are to your operation. A fresh team of soldiers, geared up to make a difference, comes from a workforce that has given the Clean River Project a major boost. Thank you. Corporate social responsibility is bringing an energy and a vitality to the front lines. Braving the cold water scouring the banks and riverbed, at times bordering on nothing short of a Herculean effort. It was a hard workout today. I know, seriously. Well, my legs are burning. Yeah. Woo! That was a big tire, too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's a great bunch of people. They get dirty, they're in the mud, and they don't care. They're, they're glad to do their part to help the environment, too. Dennis Houlihan is a retired teacher and also gives tours to help raise a little money that covers a small part of the expenses of the cleanups. Dennis is also working on a presentation he plans to give to local school children. Every child I show this to and I show the pictures to, they say to me, why are they doing that? And I said, I don't know why they're doing it. I really have no answer to that. All these kids that I want to see in the classrooms and that, so they won't do it. They'll say, I'm not doing that anymore. Put the, what do you do with a gum wrapper? Put it in your pocket. Where do you get home? Throw it in the trash. That's the way to go. Don't throw it out the window of the car. Every little piece of paper can, adds up. Now, was just, as I was saying that, we did these videos a while ago. And um, the volunteers were really incredible. I remember how hard they were working. Are you still getting a good response with the volunteers? It's nice to get companies to come out. We're actually, we, had, we actually had to adjust because of the hyper, hypodermic needles are all over the shorelines coming in from the sewer systems and so forth. But we, have, we had to get certified in all this, our team, and now we actually chaperone our volunteers. So we're, we are looking for companies to come in with their employees to get those uh, green days and, and you know, give back to the communities and by helping us on those shorelines. But uh, you know, as we go down this road, we adjust every year because things change. It's safer for a company to join up with us because they're not in the parks and so forth unchaperoned. We teach them what to look for, what not to do, all the safety gear. We're right there with them, babysitting them all the way, baby steps. So it's, it's a safe, uh, fun event to clean up the waterways. Right, right. And, and you are trained and you guys do a, a super awesome, spectacular job with your volunteers. That's right. Um, now, if a group was interested in volunteering, how would they get a hold of you? Yeah, go to Clean River Project uh, on Facebook and see us there, or go to Clean River Project uh, on uh, our website. Now, Rocky, you've removed tons and tons of debris from the river, and we're going to take a look at a video to give the viewers an idea of how much pollution we're talking about here. The things found in the Merrimack point to a deeper problem. Here we found layer upon layer of asphalt shingles, dumped so long ago that trees are growing through them. That's, that's a new pipe. And to think that this water is being drawn into the municipal water supply of bordering communities. I think a lot of people just don't look at it so they don't see it, but um, you know a lot of people just enjoy the river for the water and don't think of what's on the shores and what's five feet underneath the water. Um, I think if they actually took a ride with us, they might actually be able to um, understand what we do and maybe believe in us and help us a little more. I started doing this eight years ago. In the eight years' time, we've, we've, we've actually uh, gone close to 8,000 tires that we've taken out of the river, over 36 automobiles. We did four miles. We did uh, over six ton of debris on that last pole. We had. Uh, 50, 115 tires, we had two tons of metal, so you could see the impact that we pulled out of there in that four mile stretch. And Rocky, you were saying that you pulled 10 tons of debris out of the river that day. That day, yeah. What are you up to now? Have you had any idea? <laughs> Basically, that it goes on. It's a, big, it's a big mission here. You know, we're going on every day. We're dropping booms in right now. So there's, every day there's something going around that bend, we're gonna find something, so. So what are we talking about? Like. If Tens of thousands of car, uh, tires, um, it, it, it's huge. It's just beyond 
imagination. It all depends on what city and what, what week we're in on what city, what we find. So, You know, there's been a lot of trash cleaned up from the river and from the river banks, thanks to you guys. And we have a video I want to show you about some much larger debris that's sitting on the bottom of the river. And when I saw this, I was shocked. A skeleton is pulled up. The rest of this once automobile is now part of the Merrimack River. And it's not just a few cars. These divers are literally bumping into dozens of them, most with the keys still in the ignition. This Camaro was made in the 1980s. Under the water is a 1972 Pontiac Lamaze, stolen in 1982. There is no telling how long this car has been rotting on this river's floor. Over time, they're starting to break down. The oil start leaking out, decomposing, all your plastics, all that stuff. Then it starts, people don't realize, but when a car starts breaking apart, it starts breaking apart. You have seats, you have tires, you have all the oils and chemicals in, the, in that motor all, all over the bottom of the uh, floor of the river. We see this, we see cars that have been down here, the, the big storms will take them, they'll flip them, and then they'll start, they'll start rusting out and falling apart, and there's, there's a big scatter field all the way down the river. Now some of those cars have been sitting on the bottom of the Merrimack River for over 40 years. How did you discover these cars? <laughs> Basically, they dropped the river down one day to do the work on a dam. And they dropped it five feet, and actually we started out there doing a patrol, looking at how big the beaches were. And next thing we looked down, is all these cars. And there was uh, certain sites, wherever there was an opening, there was a whole bunch of cars. And that's what got us the, involved with the divers and getting our own dive team together. And here we are, 82 vehicles later. Now, this isn't really happening like this now. I mean, wasn't this a series of stolen cars? Isn't it, are people still dumping cars in the river? They're still dumping. They, they, we, have a, we call it a fresh one. When the divers find it, they come up and they say they have a fresh one, meaning they got a new car. You know, we probably will find one or two a year that are in there. But back in the 80s and 90s, it was a big thing back then. If you couldn't afford your car, it was in the river. And that's unbelievable because these cars are full of oil and transmission fluid and all of kinds of toxic carcinogens. Carcinogen, yeah. You know, this is treacherous work for the divers, and we were able to get some underwater video shot by one of your divers. We're going to take a look at that. We pulled out, I think, 15 other cars in this location. That one we came back for just uh, the, other the other day, and we sent down Mike, and he came up and said there were seven more cars in this location. If he wants to hook it up, he's going to be able to hook it up. If I'm in the way, the, the, there's too much silt, you're not going to be able to see anything, and you're going to be bumping into each other. Frustrated, diver Todd Hammond talks about the lack of visibility, like being in a blizzard with your high beams on. Here we see the relatively calm conditions as Todd shoots video underwater. With limited resources and limited support, these divers are literally risking their lives. Not knowing what is under the surface, as debris and natural objects like trees and the currents are a deadly combination. These heroic efforts are more than necessary because in their own words, leaving these toxic substances in the water can even be more deadly. It's all of the chemicals. I mean, uh, Methuen pulls drinking water from this river. And all of these cars are very, very close to the intakes of that drinking water. So once the, some of these batteries, all that acid in the batteries, the lead in the batteries, the oils and gasoline that are in the, in, inside of the cars are starting to leak out, they're getting pulled into the drinking water supply. They can clean it, but it's still not the same as it would be if the cars weren't here. Now that diver, Mike, has been uh, working in the river, helping Rocky, and he's actually told me he's risking his life to do this. Uh, there's things floating down the rivers. They can get trapped down there. 
And the idea is, why would you do something like that? Well, his idea is that, how can we leave this stuff in the river? You know, so Rocky, I mean, it's so terrible to see this stuff in the water and to see people risking their lives to have to pull this out. You know, people don't realize when you go down 15 feet, the lights are out. It's black, pitch black down there. Uh, luckily, there was a low water, low water on that one of those videos you've seen the diver down there, but usually it's black, lights out, and they were actually trying to hook and work in the dock down there. You know, they're ex-military, so we have got quite the divers down there. Right, and, and I uh, know that that was a, a good visibility. That's why he was able to shoot the video. I want to ask you for an update. We're going strong. Uh, we're working with the governor to try to get him to release uh, the, the bond bill that we got a, a, a potential boat skimmer coming in to clean out these booms. It's a conveyor belt system that we really need. The governor's got 250000 in the bond bill we're trying to get him to release. So this piece of equipment can be audited and shipped to the Merrimack, and it's going to turn the ecosystem around. And you've got some political allies because there's some congressmen and senators that love what you're doing and, and really want to see you do it. You know, working with, we've been around for going on 15 years with the senators, the congress people. They really love what we're doing. The EPA loves what we're doing. We got a lot of backing and they want to see us uh, keep going forward. And I understand on your way down from the North Shore here, you stopped off at the State House and dropped a personal letter right off to the governor about you. <laughs> yes, I did. I stopped in and went up to his personal secretary and had a nice letter. And I, I wrote down exactly from when I was a kid on that river, how I grew up in fishing and boating. And uh, right up to when I was a young adult, and I noticed all the trash and I was fell in love with that river. And, you know, and I turned into a, I turned it into a nonprofit. And here we are, 15 years and pulling cars and and uh, it's time for the governor to get involved too and start partnering with us, you know? And I know that you braved the traffic from the North Shore to get down here because one of the things that you're hoping this video, this story, this show will do is to inspire other people to do the kind of work you're doing. Yes, I think, I think anybody out there has got a dream of doing something, whether it's a stream or whether it's a river or a lake or something, just go do it. Even if the naysayers say no like they said to me, don't listen to them. Do it. I got up every day. I kept my chin up, and I went out there, and I worked hard, and here we are. Here we are with a fleet of boats and a good crew. And you don't even have to have a name like Rocky. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rocky. I really appreciate you being on the show. This has Thank been great, and I, and I hope the people just uh, follow your lead. I want you to come back down to the river. Oh, yeah, we got to do, do some, some more videos. Video. Some more video, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay. As we said in the beginning... This is the water of life, all our lives. We all have a stake in the outcome. If you'd like to see the videos on the Clean River Project in their entirety, you can see them on our website, e-awakening.com. Now, I'd like to thank the crew because without them, we wouldn't be here doing this show. Marilyn Broman, Chris Burgess, Tracy Crean, Billy Davis, Linda Davis, Gary Petty, Justin Shanahan, and Kathy Welch. Now, I want to close with a song that I wrote about the Merrimack River for the Clean River Project. They call you the Mary Mac. You're dirty and wide, polluted by humans. Did anyone cry? Did anyone stop to think that their children would drink these carcinogens? That was until there came some heroes on the deck. Led by Rocky Morrison and the Clean River Project. A lonely battle ensued, one piece of trash at a time. From styrofoam coffee cups. Many a syringe they would find Along with cars leaking oil And toxins galore Batteries and tires 
lay rotting on this river's floor where the fish and wildlife are trying to survive the clean river project barely keeping them alive they call you the merry mac you're dirty and wide polluted by humans did anyone cry did anyone stop to think that their children would drink these carcinogens these carcinogens There are three basic chords in the Clean River Project song. The first is played by using your index finger to press down the second string of the first fret. And then you're using your middle finger to press down the fourth string of the second fret. And you're using your ring finger to press down the third string of the second fret. And it sounds like this. That's the A minor. Now to play the G, you use your index finger to press down the fifth string of the second fret. And then you use your middle finger to press down the sixth string of the third fret. And you use your ring finger to press down the first string of the third fret. And it sounds like this. Now that's an open G. There's lots of ways to play the G chord on the guitar, but we're using the open G. Now, the third chord is played by using your index finger and pressing down the third string of the first fret. And then you use your middle finger to press down the fifth string of the second fret. and you use your ring finger to press down the fourth string of the second fret. And the E sounds like this. <clears throat> now the thing about the A minor and the E is they're basically the same configuration of your fingers. You're using this configuration for the A minor, and then you're keeping your fingers in the same position and you're moving them all up one string, so that's the E. You're going back and forth. Now, the song starts off with the A minor, and I use a rhythm like this. A minor. They call you the Merry Mac, and then I go to the G. You're dirty and wide, and then I go back to the A minor. Polluted by humans, and then back to the G. Did anyone cry? And then back to A minor. Did anyone stop to think? And back to the G. That their children would drink. And back to the A minor. These carcinogens. And then we go to the E. And this gives us a really nice change up. Listen to this. That was until there came some heroes. We're back to the A minor. On the deck. The E. Led by Rocky Morrison and the A minor Clean River Project. And then we go back to the same thing, you know, a lonely battle ensued, one piece of trash at a time. Now, one of the things I can tell you about making up music and using these simple chords is, yeah, I used to think that playing simple chords was kind of dumb and not very cool, but it's the emotion, it's the feelings that you have. It, it, you, music comes from your heart and music comes from your soul and that's what's important so have a lot of fun with your music <laughs>